Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Thank you for watching. We're going to do an album review before we get into that. An awesome live video of Colin Stetson over at TheNeedleDrop.com, linked down there in the description box below this video. That's the D box. That's a copy of Mad Villain's Mad Villainy, and this is the new Raekwon album, Shaolin versus Wu Tang. If you've been subscribed to this channel for a while, then you know I'm a big fan of the Wu Tang Clan. I think their sound is one of the most important to ever happen in rap music ever. Everybody has their favorite members of the Wu Tang Clan. I'm more of an old dirty bastard, ghost face killer kind of guy, but Raekwon has my respect too. This thing is the follow up to Only Built for Cuban Links Part 2, which was really really well received by critics. And whether or not you think that was a worthy follow-up to the original, this, I think, it's pretty apparent to me, lives up to neither of the two. A common complaint about Cuban Links Part 2 is that it didn't have enough beats from Wu-Tang's producer RZA on it. And if that irked you on that LP, this one should bother you even more, because it has a total of no RZA beats on it. But it's not like a Wu-Tang member necessarily needs RZA's production to make their new album good. I mean, look at the Ghostface Killa album, Fish Scale. Do you know who has the most production credits on that? MF Doom. So yeah, no RZA beats here, but a bunch of beats that try to imitate that RZA sound. Why? With the atmospheric sh hanging in the background, sound effects and dialogue from kung fu movies, really eerie, eerie instrumentation. It just boggles my mind. If you're going to try to grab that RZA sound, why not just get RZA or work with RZA instead of having a bunch of different producers try to copy that? Instead, why not have them work toward their strengths and develop a different sound? Unlike Cuban Links Part 2, I don't feel Raekwon exploring anything outside of the sounds that we're used to hearing him play with. He's kind of just settling into a shadow of what the Wu aesthetic is. When Raekwon does do something that's a little bit of a surprise or tries to throw a left hook, it misses by a mile. Chop Chop, which has really, really corny group vocals all over the hook, and the auto-tuned hook on rock and roll. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that, to me, Wu-Tang always stood as an alternative to, and yet it's here. There are a lot of good guest MCs here. Method Man lays down a great verse on every soldier. Black Thought's pretty good here, too, even though he doesn't really stick around as long as I would hope he would. Busta Rhymes is okay. Of course, you've got Ghostface Killa tearing it up on a few tracks. But then you've got a lot of MCs here that I'm kind of surprised to hear from. Guys who I don't really feel like fit into the gritty woo aesthetic, like Lloyd Banks or Rick Ross, especially. Uh, Jim Jones, too. I didn't really like Jim Jones on Ghostface's new album, and I'm still not a fan of him here. My least favorite tracks here, the ones that have all these bells and whistles that I really don't feel like work with the Wu-Tang aesthetic, are the longest. Some of the best tracks are the shortest. However, they blow by so fast that they don't really leave an impression. They have some good rhymes, they have some decent beats behind them, but they just kind of feel like they're there and gone. A few of the vocal mixes are off. Most of the beats don't have any beef behind them. A lot of them come off as really repetitive. 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 The beats in production here aren't the worst thing in the world, but I've heard Raekwon spit over much, much better. When it comes to rapping and flow, Raekwon is good. That's to be expected. He's Raekwon. I've used this term recently. I'm gonna use it again. It's just kind of a, a stay-at-home album. An LP whose sound is just so predictable, so comfortable, that it's pretty much just for the fans. I feel like this is kind of a transitional moment between Cuban Links 2 and 3. He even hypes 3 in the lyrics. So I'm feeling like a strong 5 to a light 6 on it. There are some alright moments, some decent tracks, but most of it I'm just kind of on the fence on. What do you think of this album? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Why? And uh, what should I review next? Thanks for watching. Anthony Fantano, Raekwon, Woo Tang, Woo Tang, Woo Tang forever.